the human eye, and the camera. So this should be a pretty quick video. We're only trying to accomplish one thing, simply to compare and contrast the human eye and the camera. And really we're talking about a very, very basic camera. So you might want to think about what similarities there are between the human eye and the camera. And we'll talk about differences as well. So here is a lovely diagram from Wikipedia, and it shows uh, kind of a slice through a human eye, showing all the different parts. You see the pupil and the iris and the lens up at the top, and then of course the, uh, the optic nerve and the, the retina on the back surface of the uh, inside of the eyeball. And lots of other things there too. So it's a uh, complex, complex instrument. So what similarities are there between the human eye and the camera? So you might want to pause the video at this point and just make your own list. See what you think. So both of them have a lens that focuses the light and it creates a real inverted image. They also have a uh, diaphragm to control the amount of light that enters the lens, and that's simply the shutter in the camera, and of course it's the pupil and iris system in the human eye. And then that light, which does get focused to a nice real inverted image, well you have to have some method of sensing the image, and that's what the retina is used for in the eye. And in old style cameras we used film, in modern cameras we have essentially an electronic retina. So that's a good way to think about what uh, how it works. Now the human eye, what happens here is that light comes in from the air and enters the eye and we might think that the lens does all the focusing but uh, most of the refraction happens when there is the largest change of index of refraction that happens when the light goes from the air into the eye in the first place. So most of that is done by the aqueous humor, which is on top of the lens. However, the lens is absolutely critical in doing that last stage of focusing, which is really important for getting that sharp image. And one of the most amazing features of the eye is just how well it works, right? So you look at something close up, then you look at something far away. And so that change in shape of the lens has to happen really quite quickly and it happens so quickly we don't even notice it happening really. And this process we call accommodation. So let's talk about how that focusing gets done. So we have our typical uh, if I do I die equation. 1 over f is 1 over the object distance plus 1 over di, f being the focal length. And let's just sort of think about the interplay between these variables. Uh, both for the human eye and for the camera. So we're really imagining here again an incredibly simple basic camera with just a single lens with a fixed shape. So it has a fixed focal length. You can get for sure much fancier cameras with multiple lenses and you can change their position relative to one another and you can do focusing that way instead. But if we imagine just one lens, fixed piece of glass, fixed shape. Then if we change the object distance, then what happens is that you've got also a, uh, a fixed focal length. So if you change the object distance, you have to change, have a corresponding change in the image distance. That's the distance between the lens and the film, or this uh, basically electronic retina. And you do that by adjusting the position of the lens. So you actually move the lens forward or back to get the image in the right place. Uh, there are some fish that actually do their focusing with their eyes in this manner as well. So we'll contrast that with the human eye. Now with the human eye, instead of the focal length being fixed, it's the image distance that's fixed. So that's the distance from the lens of your eye to the retina. You know, you really can't change that distance. So when you look at a close object and look at a far object, what has to happen? Well, you have to change the focal length. And that's actually done by physically changing the shape of the lens itself using the ciliary muscle. 
Okay, so a different way of focusing. So that's a really important difference between uh, cameras and between the human eye. And again, fancier cameras, uh, you can do a little bit of both. You actually will fiddle with the image distance, but you can also fiddle with the focal length because you have various bits of glass to play with. You can move them around relative to one another. Okay, so that is a pretty quick introduction to uh, the human eye and a basic camera. Compare and contrast. The end.